titled The Need for the Equal Rights Amendment as published in the American Bar Association Journal 20 Dan, years you're your room. Okay. 20 years before I became a Supreme Court Justice and 50 years after the ERA was first proposed by Ms. Paul. Thank you for including me. The most vigorous proponents of the 19th Amendment, granting women the right to vote, saw it as a beginning, not as a terminal point. Three years after the ratification, the National Women's Party succeeded in putting before Congress the Equal Rights Amendment, which has been reintroduced in every Congress since 1923. The wording of the amendment is a thoroughly responsible way of embodying fundamental principles in the Constitution. The objections still being voiced today were already solidly answered back then. The Equal Rights Amendment, in sum, would dedicate the nation to a new view of the rights and responsibilities of men and women. It firmly rejects sharp legislative lines between the sexes as a constitutionally tolerable Instead, it looks towards a legal system in which each person will be judged on the basis of individual <clears throat> merit and not on the basis of an unalterable trait of birth that bears no necessary relationship to need or ability. As Federal Regis Legislation Committee on the, of the Association of the Bar of the City of New York explained, the amendment would eliminate patent discrimination, including all laws which prohibit or discourage women from making full use of their political and economic capabilities on the strength of notions about, proper, about the proper role for women in society. <coughs> Sarah Grimke, noted abolitionist and advocate advocate of equal rights for men and women said in 1837, I ask no favors for my sex. All I ask of our brethren is that they take their feet off our necks. Thank you.